You guys being good. You being a good boy. Like good puppies. This is Butchie. That's Brutus. All right, you guys. Good puppies. Hey, folks, welcome back to the shop. Frank here and Butchie and Brutus. So, yeah. Yeah, a couple of sweet, sweet German Shepherds. They're um, Butchie and Brutus, our brothers. Um, Butchie is pup one from the litter. Brutus was pup three. They're six and a half years old. Uh, and they're just, just a couple of nice dogs. <laughs> uh, back in the shop today, working on the Cub Cadet uh, forklift conversion. And uh, last time we got the hydro control mostly sorted out. So that's the speed control. We're gonna be driving this tractor backwards and put the forklift mast on the back of it. So it's turned around. And uh, so we're gonna continue working uh, on the uh, steering system. Need to make some room in the fender area for hydraulic hoses to run we'll mount the steering wheel and see how that fits and um, take some measurements for the steering hoses the hydraulic hoses for the power steering and we make some progress on that so we'll get started here
I'm going to have to create a bushing here that will hold the steering shaft stationary. The bushing I have is too loose, so I'll have to I'll have to make something for here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet, but we'll do something. That'll allow us to turn the steering wheel. Okay.
We've got a screw broken off in here. And I'm going to try to remove it. This is a left hand drill bit. Let's see if we can That drill just went right through it. All right, the, the easy out, it's not working. I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. So I'm just gonna get the drill bit for this thread size. I'll get another screw, we'll test it on here. All right, it's 1024 thread. So unsuccessful in getting that broken bolt out or screw. I'm going to just try retapping it.
Now the reason to to save this this thread is because this is the location where the hydro control rod comes out. And of course this is just sheet metal, so it's not sufficient to support that. So I'm going to make a collar or perhaps it might be a it might be a square that would that would work as a as a collar to support the shaft at this point and have some bearing surface on it and then I'm going to use these two nuts they're actually nuts welded on the inside of the of the sheet metal so there'll be places to put screws to hold that collar to support that shaft better so that's why I'm rescuing or attempting to rescue the threads in this this hole all right well I mean we have another pair there's another pair of them here that are threaded they were for the other attachments the other components that were on the dash okay so that's re-threaded 1024 and that's 1024 so we'll we'll be able to attach a collar there All right, so I'm going to start measuring for the hydraulic hoses, power steering. So I'm going to run one from there to here. I basically need two this length and that's the supply and return to the hydrostats ports here to the bottom of the steering valve and then I need two lines from the steering valve to the steering cylinder so what I use, this is just a um, quarter inch fuel line and I just use it as a way to measure and then what I'll do is I'll take a use a tape measure and measure this and create a diagram showing the type of fitting I want on each end for the Napa to make up the hose. Next hose, run there.
All right, that's 13 inches. All right, so on here I want a straight JIC swivel female. On the other end I want a 90 degree number 6 JIC number 6 JIC swivel female. So this is the level of detail that I give to the Napa store. 90 degree number 6 GIC swivel female on one end number 6 GIC swivel female straight on the other end total length 13 inches I need two of them this is quarter inch hose alright that's 50 56 inches. So the hoses to the steering valve are again um, JIC 90 degree number six JIC female swivel to hose. to number six JIC swivel female straight and the total length here 56 inches. I leave myself a little extra on these lengths I put a little jog in the line so that it accounts for any uncertainties in, you know, how things wind up routing or um, since it's quarter inch hose, it's pretty flexible, so you can, can do that. I leave myself a little, a couple extra inches. Um, it's easy to run them that way. Okay. So these are the hydraulic hoses. I'll go to Napa with this and order those hoses and hopefully we'll get them um, for next week. So four of these, two of these and two of these go to the valve, the steering valve. The fifth connection on the steering valve is capped. So I need to get a number six JIC cap. I think I've got a solution for the steering column bushing. This is just a piece of the steering tube from the steering column that we cut off the tractor. I put the standard plastic bushing in one end. I have a, it's actually a Cub Cadet wheel bearing, but it fits in there. I mean, it's not a tight fit, but, uh, it should work and that will capture the steering column All right, and that will fit in the dash cover.
So that uh, solves that problem. And of course this gets fastened down with several screws. I've got the hoses for the power steering back from Napa. They turned around for me in the same day. Uh, there are a couple inches. These are like four inches longer than I asked for. Um, you know, I, my diagram showed them 13 inches from end to end, including the fittings. He cut the hoses to 13 inches, so they're like four inches too long. Now hopefully that won't be a problem. We'll fit them up and see. And of course, got the two longer ones. So, got those. I need to do some work on the steering valve. Uh, I showed a couple of weeks ago the damage to the connections at the JIC hydraulic connections at the bottom of the valve. We'll take the tape off here and look at them. And I have a tool that I'm hoping will allow me to repair this. So we'll get this in the vise, turn it over, get it in the vise, and see what we can do with it. I was at a flea market last week and bought a little toolbox and just been soaking these in evaporust for a couple hours and I got this assortment of items calipers and some drawing instruments a lot of calipers uh, dividers a little um, protractor needs to be cleaned off but uh, most of the rust there was only some little surface rust on most of these so they came clean. This is, looks like a brass protractor. So I'm going to, I'm letting these dry, I'm going to clean them up. A little depth gauge. Uh, I'm going to put that one back in. Let that soak. A, it's got some rust on it too. Right, so that'll go back in. So we'll let that stuff soak for another few hours maybe even just let it run overnight we'll come back anyway so got all this stuff for $25 I thought and plus in a little toolbox the toolbox really not nothing special but I thought that was a deal so I'm gonna match mark this so that And get it back together in the same orientation that we take it apart. So this is the tool, cool tools, fitting, fixer.
This is a diamond hone. And then there's a guide here that's supposed to thread on. This is loose on here. I would prefer if I put it down all the way, it just keeps going. I want to make sure that I get the get a stable guide. This guide to guide the hone. This is too thick. See there I get it. it's stable but let me look around for something else. Right. So it looks like it has surfaced part of that. I'm going to move on to the next one. So that's surfaced it all the way around. It hasn't, not as consistent as that one, but I'm going to work on all of them, go work around gradually. Don't know how long this diamond hone is going to last. How many.
taking that uh, little whiny noise to mean that it's made a ceiling surface all the way around. The hone, the hone still feels, feels good. Now this one is pretty badly deformed but I do have a ring around it and if I'm correct that's all you need is one ring one annular surface because it's a cone to the cone All right, so these two look pretty good. This one looks good. This one only has a small ring that's been honed. Work on this one a little bit more. I'm using a very light touch. I'm not putting any, any pressure on the, on the hone. Very little pressure. Oh, well, here's a puppy coming in here. My hands are all greasy. Got a little wider area. It's not as good as these other three, but we might be able to get a seal on that. This one is the one I'm worried about. This is the uh, auxiliary output. So it's for power beyond, it's the power beyond port in, in essence. And we're not gonna use any power beyond. Um, so maybe, so I'm planning to cap this one, but I need to cap the seal too, so. Well, it has a very small ring here. I 
there's no way I know, no easy way I know to pressure test this to see if it's, you know, if these, if I get enough contact to make a decent seal without actually installing it and trying to use it. And I hate to do that and then have to take it out and work on it again, but they're only 600 PSI, so they're not real high pressure. So I think I'm pretty confident that I can get these three to seal pretty readily. This one, a little iffy, but it does have a, a ring. This one has a ring too, but not much there. It's because it's mashed. If you can see that. There's just barely a ring. Let me run this one a little bit more. Well, I have a ring, so I'm going to assume that I'll be able to get a seal on that. When I say I have a ring, I mean there's a continuous circular surface, annular surface, which has been honed. So it should make contact. The cone-shaped connector should make a contact on that ring. I might have to go to cooltools.com and look at the demo videos. All right, let's get this back together. All right, here's my match mark there and here. You know, I don't know where this ball bearing goes. This is a hole that has a recess in it, so my instinct is to put it there.
All right, so I've labeled in, right, out, left, in, right, out, left. I'm going to mark this not so much because I think it's necessarily going to be the but left turn, but it's attached to the left turn port. So at least I know which end is which. And this is right. All right, I've got the discharge of the charge pump going to the in, the out coming back to here, and then I've got the two cylinder hoses here. We we'll run them forward. Don't have anything tight yet.
I'm not sure whether the extra length on the hoses I got is a good thing or a bad thing here. <clears throat> Alright, so that's power steering, supply and return. So obviously these hoses are a little long. I'll have to pull them up here and manage them. I don't know which way is which in terms of turning. We're going to find out when we start the tractor and operate the power steering we'll see which way <laughs> it turns and then we'll just switch these two hoses. if it turns the wrong way we'll just switch these two hoses and that'll that'll take care of that all right guys that's it for this week got the power steering installed so next step next week is focus on the choke and throttle cables and the wiring harness we get those things put together and at least we can start the engine, test out the steering, see if those repairs on the steering valve connections worked. Uh, I, there's a pretty slick little tool that hone. It seemed to work right, it seemed to work as advertised. Uh, those connections were pretty badly damaged. I'm hoping that I was able to get enough of the sealing surface cleaned up to make a seal. So I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed on that. Uh, if not, I'm buying a, you know, a, a, another valve. But we'll come back, keep working on this, and with any luck, we'll we'll have a driving tractor here in pretty short order. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Leave a comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. Share with your friends, uh, and we'll see you guys uh, next week.